I'm Ed Schultz, Politics Nation with Reverend Al Sharpton starts right now. Good evening, Rev. Good evening, Ed, and thanks to you for tuning in. Breaking news tonight, a new phase of the investigation into Michael Brown's death begins. According to the Washington Post, St. Louis County prosecuting attorney Bob McCullough plans to present evidence to a grand jury tomorrow to consider charges against Officer Darren Wilson, who shot Michael Brown last Saturday. Also tomorrow, Attorney General Eric Holder will travel to Ferguson, where he, meet, where he will meet with FBI agents and prosecutors from the Justice Department. There are some 40 FBI agents on the ground. They're now, and they've interviewed more than 200 people. Clearly, the attorney general is not waiting for the results from the local investigation to try to figure out what happened. Law enforcement sources also confirmed to NBC News today that a federal autopsy on Michael Brown's body is complete. And today in nearby St. Louis, another fatal police shooting. The St. Louis police chief says two officers shot a 23-year-old African-American man after he brandished a knife at them. He says the officers drew their weapons after they told the man to drop the knife and he didn't do so. This new incident appears to be unrelated to the Ferguson protest, but it drew a large crowd chanting, hands up, don't shoot. And St. Louis Alderman Antonio French, who's been a frequent present at the presence at the uh, Ferguson protest, spoke to the crowd. The last thing we need is violence in our neighborhood. No silliness over here. All right? We understand this. We know our rights. You know your we rights. Know I rights. know your rights, brother, too. Yes, and I'm going to make sure that this man's yes. rights were exercised, too, and we're going to find out what happened. It's unrelated to Michael Brown, but clearly struck a nerve with the community demanding justice. Piercing through all of this is the voice of a grieving mother who will bury her son on Monday. Ms. McSpadden, what will bring peace to the streets of Ferguson? Justice. Justice will bring peace, I believe. Only if that justice results in the arrest or charges being filed against Officer Wilson, is that what it's going to take? Yes. Him being arrested, charges being filed, and a prosecution him being held accountable for what he did. So will there be an arrest? And what is it like on the ground right now? Joining me now from Ferguson are MSNBC.com's Tremaine Lee and Missouri State Representative Courtney Allen Curtis, whose district includes most of Ferguson. Thank you both for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Tremaine, uh, Michael Brown's mother says arresting Officer Wilson would bring calm to Ferguson. Is that what you're hearing from protesters and people on the street? Most certainly. Uh, people on the street are saying they want a number of things. Uh, one is they want to be heard, all the past grievances that have involved the police. Um, and then when it comes to Michael Brown's uh, case, they want a clear and transparent investigation. But a step beyond that, they want an arrest and a prosecution. They've said for days on end that they feel that um, Michael Brown was murdered and left in the street like an animal, and they want answers. So justice from this side of the case um, is nothing short of an arrest and then eventual prosecution. All right. Tremaine, hold one minute. Uh, let's stand by. I want to go to some breaking news out of Texas. Governor Rick Perry is appearing at his arraignment on abuse of power charges. The governor was indicted last week for trying to remove a Democratic district attorney. The governor has called the charges an outrageous political attack. Let's listen. ...by someone who lives up to the highest standards of conduct and personal integrity. And this issue is far bigger than me. It's about the rule of law. It's about the Constitution that allows not just a governor, but every citizen to speak their mind free of political interference or legal intimidation. This indictment 
is nothing short of an attack on the constitutional powers of the office of governor. There are important fundamental issues at stake, and I will not allow this attack on our system of government to stand. I'm going to I'm going to fight this injustice with every fiber of my being. And we will prevail. And we'll we'll prevail because we're standing for the rule of law. That is Governor Rick Perry going inside to be booked. He was indicted for trying to remove a Democratic district attorney. He has said from the beginning this is political and bogus and will not stand, but it may have political implications since he has been widely expected to run for president again in 2016. Again, he's going into the courthouse where he is to be booked on an indictment for uh, trying to uh, remove a Democratic district attorney charge of abuse of power, among other things. Let's, let's go back to Ferguson. We uh, were talking uh, with, of course, Representative Kurt, Courtney Allen Curtis and Tremaine Lee. Representative Curtis, I was talking with uh, Tremaine about the uh, arrest, the mother saying this morning she wants an arrest. Tremaine saying people there saying they want a fair and even investigation and that there's probable cause there. How, is that what you're hearing and how do you react to what the mother said this morning? Uh, obviously, we want what the mother wants as well, but I'm hearing that, and it's even going further as of today. Uh, there's uh, roughly about 24,000 warrants uh, within the city of Ferguson, and uh, they're actually calling on the mayor now to uh, recall or uh, get rid of those warrants because of the over-enforcement of the law in Ferguson. But even outside of that, they're even asking for the conviction, you know, not just the arrest and prosecution, but now people are starting to call for a conviction just because, you know, the communication hasn't come out the way that they want it to and uh, now the list of demands is even growing. Now, Tremaine, there's still a lot of uh, things about the shooting and the officer, Darren Wilson, that we don't uh, uh, know. Questions like, where is he? Has he been questioned? Why did he shoot? How many times did he shoot? Will he be charged? I mean, would it help calm Ferguson if these questions were answered? Oh, m most certainly, uh, Rev. The, the longer um, authorities and officials wait to, to release this information, um, you're going to continue to see the kind of twirling of the rumor mill. We already know that uh, emotions are at a fever pitch. People are angry. Um, now, of course, as, as we believe, this latest shooting in St. Louis has nothing to do with this case. But again, it fans the flames of people who say that um, police and uh, law enforcement officials have been so heavy-handed, particularly in the black community. And so until we get some of those answers, particularly, um, you know, how many times did the officer fi file, fire um, some of the other ballistic evidence that might corroborate uh, what the witnesses have said? People in this community are not going to be happy. And again, it's calm right now. The police have done a, a pretty great job of neutralizing the streets. They've blocked off one end and they have a checkpoint at another. Um, so going into tonight, uh, we'll see again if anger and if, um, you know, all the, the emotion that we've seen unfurling into violence and the police pushback. If we get into that again tonight, Rev. But, I, but at, in my two visits down there with, to, with the family and the churches, I keep hearing people saying there's no transparency. Nobody's coming for no police report, nothing. How in that atmosphere, Representative Curtis, can you expect people to find any level of trust when they're being told nothing? We absolutely can't, uh, you know, operate in this, uh, you know, in this environment. Uh, even outside of that, nobody knows what the investigative process is. Uh, I myself and others have asked, you know, personally for individuals to release what the investigative process looks like to at least provide the public some information so that they know what to expect or, you know, what actions have to take place before they can get to what they're looking for. But we've yet to see that come out. Uh, and uh, McCullough hasn't said that there's a time frame. I get that there may not be a time frame, but at least in, uh, release the information with regards to the investigative process.
Now, now, Tremaine, one of the things that is interesting also is that there are some officials down there that deny there's a racial divide at all. Uh, you know, uh, uh, the mayor, James uh, Knowles, he spoke with uh, my colleague Tamron Hall, and this is what he said earlier today. Listen. There is not a racial divide in the city of Ferguson. According to whom? Is that your perspective, more... or do you believe that that is the perspective of African Americans in your community? I... That is the perspective of all residents in our city. Absolutely. Not a racial divide. Do you think he's listening to his constituents, to the people you've talked to, Tremaine, since you've been down there? Right. I mean, I think one, it's one thing to say there's no uh, racial undertone here, but then in practice, it's almost like an apartheid state. When you look at the school board, not a single African American on the school board, yet the community is 70 percent African American. You have three police officers, three black police officers on a force of 53. You talk about ladders, the opportunity. Young people feel that there are none. The schools, many of them are failing, and the state is already embroiled in a controversy about um, a transfer program. And so while he says that, um, he's probably listening to his constituents. Um, there was a, a great um, article in the New Republic recently uh, where they polled, um, you know, white folks in St. Louis and, and how people talked about what's happening in this community. And it's, it's on the people themselves for destroying their community and all those kind of, all that kind of coded language. Um, and so there's clear issues here. And I don't know if he's um, trying to do a, a PR move or what, but uh, clearly black folks in this community uh, feel that there's a this long and, you know, really terrible history here. Representative and, and Curtis, folks, you're an elected yeah. official there. Do you and other of your colleagues in, in the, well, there are not that many in that area, but that serve in elective office that are black, feel there's no racial divide there in Ferguson, as the mayor said? We absolutely know that there is a, a racial issue here. It's unfortunate, but it is North County. Uh, if you look at some of the elected offices, uh, if there's a complete divide. And uh, typically, when you speak of your constituency, you speak of the individuals that vote. Uh, sadly, not enough of the individuals in the Ferguson uh, area uh, vote. So if you're talking to your constituents, they may feel one way, but the broader constituency and the citizens in the area definitely could feel a different way. Now, tomorrow, Tremaine, uh, U.S. Attorney General Eric Holder will be there, and he's going to be meeting with uh, the federal prosecutors and, and others tomorrow. Uh, and uh, he's, he has an op-ed in the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. He wrote, quote, at a time when so much may seem uncertain, the people of Ferguson can have confidence that the Justice Department intends to learn in a fair and thorough manner exactly what happened. How important is this? Oh, it's it's very important that the fact that this case has, um, you know, climbed all to the heights of our government, and it's also um, par for the course recently for the attorney general and the president that they're identifying zero tolerance policies in schools. They're identi they're putting their finger on the prison to the school to prison pipeline, and so they clearly um, have an understanding of what uh, particularly um, young black and brown people are going through. And so the people of this community certainly feel that they at least have a friend, someone that will be given honest look and put pressure on other officials to take an honest and look at what's going on here. Tremaine Lee and State Representative Courtney Allen Curtis, thank you both for your time tonight. Thank you, thank sir. Thank you. Coming up, more on the breaking news tonight. The grand jury sits tomorrow. What might happen behind closed doors? Will there be an arrest? Plus, after another night of clashes with police, what's happening tonight? MSNBC's Chris Hayes is live in Ferguson. And how can police maintain order without stepping on people's rights. Our Craig Melvin rode along with the man in charge of that, Captain Ron Johnson. That's ahead. I think it's about racial feelings.